So hi everyone, welcome to the HWBOT anniversary, 10 years anniversary here today. I'm here with uh, Vivi from South Africa. Hi Vivi, how are you doing? Yeah, great in yourself? Yeah, doing great, doing great. Um, we want you to spend some time with you here. Uh, basically, what? Uh, just present yourself, like where do you come from and what have, uh, how long have you been overclocking and stuff like this? Well, um, I've been overclocking since 2008, so that's about for six years um, since I was in high school and yeah I'm from South Africa and the city is not very big there so it's very nice to come here and meet, meet all the friends and just overclock together. That, that's what we are at the HWBOT uh, anniversary, 10 years anniversary. Um, for you what is HWBOT? Like how did this uh, change your life in the overclocking scene? Well HWBOT actually changed my life a lot even financially. Um, because it's the, the only ranking site in the world for overclocking records. And I feel like if it's not on HWBOT, it's not really a record, because it's where all the records are listed. And yeah, um, as a site, I think they did a great job with this event, and I hope to see a lot more of this. That's what we had the we had the, the support from some of the uh, some of the vendors today like uh, Cooler Master, Gigabyte, Gskill, Gillette. Uh, what do you what do you want to say to this kind of sponsor that they support this kind of event? Well, um, I'm really proud of these companies because I, I know a lot of the people in them personally, and um, like Gskill, they sponsored all the liquid nitrogen, Gigabyte sent motherboards, Cooler Master and Enermax have power supplies. Gillette is this thermal paste. You know they all or how helping to support the overclocking community and I think it's definitely the step forward because overclocking is just going to get bigger and bigger from here. Now, regarding this kind of event, this was organized by HWBOT, it's been 10 years now. Um, we, we are also trying to push the uh, overclocking broadcast with commentary and live feedback. So what do you expect from, uh, from a live stream when you watch it at home that something happens somewhere else? Well. A live stream is really important because for overclocking it's really hard to understand what is going on. So if you don't have a picture of the screen, a video of what is going on and live commentary, it's really hard to get good feedback out of the event. So if you don't have the live stream and the commentary, it, it's going to be a tough event. So I think it's really good that everything is being recorded and commented on. It's what all esports have, it's necessary. Yeah, that's true. And what do you think about Overclocking TV doing all this uh, kind of broadcast and commentary for that? Line? Well, you guys come a long way. You were there since the start. So um, everyone likes you. Everyone knows you do a great job. And when I'm at home, I, I watch it myself and I don't have any issue with it. It's really good and necessary. Perfect. Thank you. Um, we want to talk a bit more about you. Like, when did you really start Overclocking and for what, what purpose? Well... I think I was back in 2007 or 2008 when I was in high school and um, basically I was playing Dota, uh, a computer game and my dad said I could get a new computer and he said I had to build it myself and then I had to learn how to build it and when you build it you learn how fast it goes and then I just started making it faster and faster until I hit liquid nitrogen and then everything just went overclocked from there. Uh, what what did make you change to go from regular things to the uh, overclocking extreme overclocking things? Well, it's basically um, speed, and I realized that I could only reach a certain speed on air cooling. And then, when you make it water cooling, you can go even faster. And when you make the water colder, you can go even faster. And then I did dry ice and then liquid nitrogen. And so basically, it's the the want, the need for more speed that made me get into the extreme overclocking. And did the uh, competitive overclocking on HWBOT with the system of the ranking and the point did uh, help a lot in that? Yes, if HWBOT wasn't there I would not be interested in overclocking at all because there's no way to rank yourself, there's no way to see what is going on so I was very involved in HWBOT and trying to get my rank up and, and that's how I made it so far. Actually, you made it so far, and you made it great because you are one of the top overclockers now, and and you are the actually the first one in the uh, on the overclockers league. Yes, um, at the moment I'm in first in the extreme overclockers league, and theor theoretically third in the overall league if all the all the overclockers were put into one league. So it would be nice to rank us all in the same league, but at the moment I'm first in the current league. Yes. So there, there was some, some talk about getting overclocking as uh, a bigger esport, like more than the esport thing with like uh, professional teams, etc. There's the Pro OC Cup online on HWBOT and all this pro thing going on. Um, what do you think about the, the scene getting more professional lately? Um, well, it's, 
I'm not surprised because people are getting more aware about computers and more aware about overclocking and speed motherboard every motherboard manufacturer has an overclocking version motherboard so things are getting pretty serious and if you look at the prices this year they were all almost double what they were last year the prize money for the competitions so as a sport I think it's becoming pretty serious and I think it's just going to get bigger and bigger and we also see that uh, n now the community is uh, getting mature it first ramp up and now it's getting mature uh, what what would you do to push more in the, in your country or to do something online to to get more people involved from your from your point of view well in my country people are more getting more aware and starting to overclock on the air systems at home so i think if if there's a an effective way to broadcast overclocking live overclocking um, for your the countrymen they will be more interested so more events more gatherings and just more overclocking Yeah, do you, there's always the talk that overclocking doesn't sell, but what is your opinion on that? Well, <laughs> I really think it does sell because the prize money of all the competitions wouldn't have doubled if there wasn't a reason for it. So I think it's, it's just at the beginning now and it's going to get better and better. Uh, Vivi, what is your best moment in the past 12 months in the uh, overclocking scene? Well, it's going to sound very corny, but this is definitely my best moment because... All the overclockers can just overclock freestyle and help each other and from all over the world, all kinds of overclockers are at this HWBOT anniversary gathering. And the reason why I like it so much is the record I took earlier today in Unigy in Heaven, um, I really needed the advice of six different overclockers for us to debug and understand this graphics card. So just to be able to come together as a community and just enjoy overclocking is definitely the highlight of my trip. Thank you Vivi for your time. Uh, we hope uh, you had a good trip back home. You have to pack up now and, uh, and leave and hope to see you again soon for another competition. Yeah, for sure. Thanks.